Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Portland-based jazz pianist and composer Carrie Pollitzer. She opened up about her newest 2019 CD called Diagonal. She got her Bachelor of Music in Jazz Piano from the New England Conservatory of Music, and she lived in New York City for many years. On this sixth studio album, it's brilliant. It pays tribute to a brilliant Brazilian jazz guitarist and composer, and she talks all about it. So please dig this interview, my friends. So, Carrie, thank you for taking a minute after Neon Jazz today. Thank you for reaching out with the brand new album, Diagonal. I appreciate it. Oh, I'm so happy that you enjoyed it. So talk to me. You know, I know that you have, you know, kind of a, a Latin jazz kind of roots in you. Talk to me about this album and what kind of the artistic vision was. I was thinking about this composer, uh, Durval Ferreira, and... His music is such a great combination of bebop and bossa nova. And it's very, he writes very compelling melodies and they're very memorable. And I thought that it would be a cool idea to kind of have a project of two parts. So the first part was a concert that we did here in Portland with traditional arrangements of his tunes that I had gotten from, you know, various albums. He, he only recorded one album under his own name while he had a really active career. So I took a bunch of songs from that. And then the second part of the project was to rearrange a lot of the songs in kind of a more modern jazz format. And so that's what I did with the album. You have a great lineup on this album. Talk to me about how all of the players came together to make this sound work. Well, the drummer is easy. I often work with him. He is the really well-known pianist, George Colligan, but he's a multi-instrumentalist, and so on different projects, I've used him on trumpet and drums, and he also, well, he also plays organ and now electric bass, and, you know, he's just incredible, but I always really enjoy playing with him on drums because he's a very sensitive and interactive drummer, and since he's a pianist, he kind of knows what, what the pianist needs when he plays drums, so that was kind of a no-brainer. And then we had a wonderful percussionist on a few tunes named Simon Lucas, who has a group, the Brazilianaires, here in Portland. The guitar player, Ben Graves, is somebody that really loves Brazilian music, and he has a duo here in Portland. The bass player we got from Seattle, his name is Tim Carey, and he plays with the Brazilian musicians who, who live in Seattle. There's like a small group of really fine musicians up there. And then the reeds player played saxophones and flute and clarinet. He's really a top-notch uh, player who's, I think he goes on tour with Diane Shore, and he, he has a really active career, John Nastos. So this is your sixth album, and at this point, how do you feel about where things are in your career? I mean, you're, you're well on your path here. How do you feel with this album and looking forward? It kind of changes, like your musical vision kind of changes from day to day. So I did this project, and this is the first project I ever did that was mostly a tribute to somebody else, because um, most of my albums are of original music. But I kind of want to go in a couple directions from here. On the one hand, I like to do another album, kind of like my previous album, Below the Surface, that was a quintet album with a, you know, all original compositions and a lot of various time signatures and beats because that was just a really fun project. And the other thing I'd like to do is more of like an electronic, like a new bossa kind of an album because I, I really admire a lot of um, singers, like Brazilian singers that have, you know, projects that incorporate electronics. So I've seen you perform live here in Kansas City before. So my question with this kind of more Latin flavor of things, how much fun is this to perform live? It's really, really fun. <laughs> yeah, because the the rhythms are just, you know, the rhythms of Brazilian music are really uh, compelling and appealing. And they, they make it fun to play and they make it fun to listen. When you present this album to a crowd and they decide to buy the CD and make the commitment to listen to this CD over and over again, what do you want the listener to get out of this experience from Diagonal? It might be interesting for them to go back and hear the originals and they can hear how different these arrangements are from the original songs, which were already quite nice. But we've done some different things with them. Like there's, there's one song 
that is popularly performed. It's called Bashira Jiferenci, and we did it in seven instead of, you know, how people usually do it in, I guess, two, four. And then there's a song called The Day It Rains or Shuva, and I guess there's some different arrangements of that. There, in, some of them are in four. Then there's an arrangement by Baden Powell on guitar in three four. So we took the three four arrangement, but I did like a reharmonization of it with with the flute line. So I, I tried to do creative stuff with the tunes and really kind of transform them. So I thought it might be interesting for somebody to to you know listen to the differences. So you know the one thing that's very that's pretty prevalent in the world of jazz is like redoing songs, you know, whether it's Cole Porter, whether it's a project that you've done, Miles, Monk, all the way down the line. How important is it for the modern musician to revisit these projects or revisit these songs and redo them? I mean, and the whole lineage of what you do as musicians, how important is this that we revisit these and we, we put our own spin on it? Well, you can find so much inspiration in the past because there, there's been so much strong music. I mean, people are, and people are always rediscovering old music. I mean, this, this new old album of Coltrane's that just came out, you know, that's like new fodder for people's ears. I mean, it's kind of, it's exhaustive, you know, the, the process of, of looking, like kind of mining old material for new inspiration. I dig it. Well, hey, Carrie, thank you for opening up. Thank you for reaching out with the new album. I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to spending it on Neon Jazz. I'm so glad. Thank you so much for <laughs> chatting with me. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players and pianists in Portland, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Carrie for her time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.